Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Animal Artists Collective video. The AAC is an initiative founded by Denise Soden and Jennifer Charlie to raise awareness about animal conservation through education and art. Each piece created for each AAC theme is available for purchase with half the proceeds going to animal conservation and welfare. Our theme for this month is Extinct Animals. Some of the other artists are highlighting animals that went extinct recently, and some of them are highlighting animals that went extinct a little further back. I've decided to go back 280 million years ago and paint an animal called Dimetrodon. Now Dimetrodon, or Dimetrodon, or however you'd like to pronounce it, is a genus of extinct synapsids, also known as stem mammals, which is to say that contrary to a common belief, Dimetrodon is not a dinosaur. It's more closely related to mammals than they are to dinosaurs and birds, and it lived around 40 to 50 million years before any creature considered a dinosaur even evolved. Dinosaurs are animals included in the clade Dinosauria, which is a classification based on the placement and number of holes or fenestrae in the skull and the positioning of a dinosaur's legs beneath its body. It doesn't actually have anything to do with being old or being dead. In fact, some dinosaurs are even around today since birds are descended from that group. Demetrodon might have had a form of rudimentary thermoregulation. Their sail could have possibly been used to aid in the heating or cooling of their blood, giving them better control over their body temperature, more like a warm-blooded mammal than a cold-blooded reptile. The sail could also have been used for display or recognition. Traits can evolve for a variety of purposes from a variety of factors, so it's likely the sail had multiple benefits to these animals. But without being able to observe their behavior in life, we'll never know for certain. When an animal goes extinct, whether it's recent or millions of years in the past, we lose the ability to learn about them in action and understand how they've adapted to their habitats. When an animal is so old that they only exist in the fossil record, the study of their interactions with other organisms and their environment is called paleoecology and spans many scientific fields and requires many bright minds. Uh, including paleontologists, ecologists, climatologists, biologists, and palynologists. So, seeing as Demetrodon is dead, <laughs> drawing it like it might have been in life requires a lot of research and knowledge of the tree of life, or of phylogeny, uh, which is the term for the evolutionary relationships between species over time. Looking at where Demetrodon lies on a phylogenetic tree, shows which animals it was more closely related to, and also which of those animals are still alive or extant, which I can look up for reference. Since Demetrodon is related to mammals, I've given it a soft-skinned look with some fun little whiskers. However, because its body plan is low to the ground and stubby-legged, uh, I gave it a pose similar to my stubby-legged, sun-loving lizard Cicero, who's a Euromastix. This combination of a reptilian pose with mammalian textures makes my Demetrodon feel sufficiently basal and old, uh, which I really enjoy. I think he turned out quite well. Speaking of this painting in particular, I started out with a base of quinacridone magenta, which I knew would shine through my painting and give it sort of a pinky purple um, glow from within, uh, which I was really really aiming for. I wanted to use the pigments to uh, not only reflect sort of a, um, a sunset feeling perhaps, uh, but also to add a, an element of fantasy to the painting because it is a reconstruction uh, of an animal that we've never seen alive uh, and I didn't want in this in this piece anyway to imply that I was trying to create something that looked exactly like Dimetrodon should have looked. Um, Scientific illustration spans a lot of different uh, purposes and, and levels of uh, verisimilitude and levels of scientific accuracy. Usually scientific illustrations that are created to be re reconstructions for papers are done in conjunction with scientists and researchers who are giving the artist feedback. I work with some of these scientists and researchers, but this piece I just did on my own. Um, I'm doing it for myself, 
And so I'm not under any, any pretense of saying this is what Dimetrodon should look like. I'm saying that this is a an interpretation of Dimetrodon that I intend to be fun and, and beautiful and attractive. So the pink, I, I think, was um, fantastical enough uh, to break it away a little bit from realism um, while also keeping it sort of sort of real because pink is close to red which would be a good underpainting for something with with so much blood in in its sail collecting heat and stuff like that um, overall i kept it kind of a a simple color scheme with a uh, dark on the top and lighter counter shading on the belly a little bit of a mammalian like raccoon bandit mask uh, and i also kept the sail quite dark uh, and simple it, they could have had crazy patterns on it, totally, they could have. Um, and this would be a great way to differentiate between individuals or woo a mate with your fancy, fancy sail. Um, but I thought that a dark color would absorb more light and give this animal the ability to heat up faster than any of its other competitors. Once the sun rose up over the, over the horizon and it had this dark sail, it could get really warm really fast and have lots of energy to to compete to survive in the Permian landscape. Um, I also included uh, just some rocks for it to lounge on which would help it get warm and uh, a stump uh, of a sigillaria plant, a Permian plant, and some mosses as well. The end Permian was a very dry and desolate place. There was an end Permian extinction um, which I, I recommend reading up on. It's one of the major extinctions of Earth's history, um, but the Permian wasn't always sort of this horrible, huge desert. Um, I wanted it to feel like the ground is alive and the animals alive and it's just a regular old day in, in nature. I will be donating half of the proceeds from the sale of this painting to the Canadian Wildlife Federation because you know, even though even though a lot of animals in the world are extinct, most of the animals that have ever lived on planet Earth are extinct. Um, I want to give back to to a foundation that's going to help other animals from from becoming extinct due to human causes. So that's where the money will be going for the sale of this painting. And I hope you learned a little bit about Demetrodon. Um, I could have talked for ages and ages about what exactly a synapsid is, what's a diapsid, what about therapsids? Um, uh, even though I love all of this stuff, it's, it's important to me to remain accessible and to remain, um, you know, within, within my zone, not to, go, not to cross the lines on my highway. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this painting in watercolor and gouache, and definitely check out all of the other pieces from this month's Animal Artist Collective videos. Thank you for watching, and have a great day. Bye!